You're going to see here that our aim for today is exactly the same as yesterday's aim. We're going to be identifying three forms of linear equations and putting them into slope-intercept form. Exactly the same as yesterday. Um, I just wanted to spend a little bit more time practicing this as well as introduce a handful of small detailed things that maybe we didn't see yesterday or we just needed to focus in on a little bit more after I saw your work from yesterday. Back to the important stuff. Um, so looking at this problem, uh, this is a problem that a lot of, that we did yesterday, very mu much like one we did yesterday at the very least, and that a lot of us made mistakes on. So um, what I really want to focus in on, the biggest, like I said earlier during the do now, one of the biggest problems was not doing the additive inverse. It seems like we've got that down pretty well. Um, the problem is when we get to the point where we've got the y term alone, it's making sure that we making sure that we get that multiplicative inverse carried out correctly. All right, so looking here, we need to go ahead and divide both sides by two. We need to divide the entire side by two. That's not the big point. I think most of us have gotten to the point where we understand, yes, we need to divide both parts by two. The issue came when they were doing this first division. Fourth fifths divided by two, and a lot of them never wrote it down like this, because I feel like if they had written it down like this, something would have popped into their head and said, oh, this is really just a fraction division problem. So if it's a fraction division problem, I need to make them both of fractions, and they would have gone, hmm, what do I know about dividing fractions? What do I know about dividing fractions? Oh yes, way back when I was a youngin, way back in fifth grade, somebody said to me, dividing fractions is easy as pie, just flip the second and multiply. All right, so that being said, we're going to flip the second here. It's going to become a one-half, and we are going to multiply. That's going to give us four-tenths, which can be simplified to two over five. So y is equal to two-fifths x plus... We also need to remember to do the 10 divided by 2, which is indeed 5. And here we are in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, y equals 2 fifths x plus 5. So again, the detail here that we're really focused in on that um, a lot of us make mistakes was here is this division of 4 fifths divided by 2, making sure we understand what that looks like. Next problem. This is one very much like the do now. We didn't run into one of these yesterday, um, but we did run into one during the do now, so this should be pretty straightforward for us. First thing we need to do, we need to add a positive 3x to both sides. We're going to get that y term all by itself by doing the additive inverse of anything else that's over there with it. It's going to give me 3 fourths x, or, oh, no, sorry, 3 fourths y is equal to 3x plus 24. Now, we talked about when we do this inverse operation, what is the multiplicative inverse of multiplying by 3 fourths? Madeline. Multiply by the reciprocal. So we need to multiply by 4 thirds, which is no big deal. Um, that's what we easily catch on to. The mistake that we make is realizing that when we multiply by 4 thirds, we have to multiply the entire other side by 4 thirds. How is it that I'm going to make sure that I identify to myself and everybody who reads my work that I need to multiply by everything on the other side? How am I going to group those that side together so I make sure that it gets multiplied? Javier? Parentheses, absolutely. So we want to make sure we get that whole group, that whole chunk, that whole side multiplied together. All right? So that's going to tell us that we need to go ahead and distribute. And 4 thirds times 3x. So 3 over 1 times 4 thirds. Getting kind of sloppy over here, but that is a 4x plus a 24 times 4 thirds. That's 24 over 1 times 4 thirds. And I'm going to do some pre-simplification here. That's 8 times 3. Cancel, cancel. Gives me 32. 
y equals mx plus b. y equals 4x plus 32. All right, so looking at the next problem. The next problem involves decimals. We didn't see any decimal problems yesterday, but it's just as easy as fractions. The only difference is we have to pay more careful attention to where our decimal places are. A lot of fine details in these problems that we have to pay attention to. First things first, what do you think we ought to do to solve this problem, Raisa? Chain switch would be a wonderful first step because that's going to help us get on the path of simplifying each side of the equation. Now, remember, before we start doing inverse operations, we always want to simplify both sides of the equation. So the left-hand side of this equation is simplified, but the right-hand side is not. Adriana, what can I do to simplify the right-hand side of the equation? Distribute. Lovely. Lovely. Y plus negative 0.35. 1.3 times X, that's 1.3X. And 1.3 times negative 3.5. Immediately I go, ooh, bad date. I'm going to go ahead and put that negative down immediately. I'm going to do 1.3 times 3.5. 5, carry the 1. 5 is 6. 0 is 9. And 3 plus, nope, no plus. And I get 5, 5, carry the 1 is 4. This is the thing that we just have to be careful about. How many decimal places? 2, 1, 2. That's 4.55. I identified earlier that this was negative. So now we're good to go. All right, we've got um, everything simplified on both sides, so we're now ready to do some inverse operations. Marlon, what inverse operation do we need to do? Add a positive 0.35 to both sides. So y equals oops, no, y plus positive 0.35 plus the negative 0.35 that's already there is equal to 1.3x plus negative 4.55 plus 0.35. That cancels out, giving me y is equal to 1.3x. Nothing to combine there. However, combining our constants, negative 4.5 plus positive 0.35. The thing that immediately jumps out to me here, and this is one of those details we have to be careful about, I'm adding a negative and a positive, which means I actually need to Subtract and take the sign of the larger number. I immediately identify negative 4.55 as the larger number. That tells me two things. Number one, my answer is going to be negative. Number two, when I do the subtraction, the 4.55 needs to be on top. Got my decimals all lined up. I get 4.20. I can rewrite that simply as 4.2. Y equals 1.3X plus negative 4.2. Y equals MX plus B. Yes, Marlon. Good question. All right, one last problem. All right, looking at this, this is neither of our, none of our, um, normal forms of the equation, but that doesn't mean that we can't solve it. First thing that we need to do is start getting that y term alone. What inverse operation do I want to do to get that y term alone, Malcolm? Mm -hmm. oh, uh, negative Some negative I point three. Uh, okay, so <laughs> let's add a positive point three x because that's going to get them to cancel out plus the point eight y. Two point four x plus a point three x plus negative three. It's point eight y. 
So we can go ahead and combine these terms in this step. 2.4x plus 0.3x, that's 2.4 plus 0.3. It's going to give me 2.7x plus negative 3. And now that we've got the y term alone, that gives me one last inverse operation to do. Kevin, name that inverse operation. Sorry, louder. What's the inverse operation we need to do? This is a three. No, that's not a, sorry, you got me all confused. This is a three. So we need to get the y alone, so what inverse operation do we need to do? Christopher, help him out. Need what? I'm looking for an inverse operation. Divide by 0 0.8. That's a great inverse operation, one of my favorites. All right, when we divide by 0 0.8, we need to make sure that we divide the entire side by 0 0.8. So that means we've got two divisions to do, 2.7x. So that's 2.7 divided by 0 0.8. This is another place where we have to be very careful, making sure our decimals are in the right place. We have a decimal outside the house, so we move it. One time, it's going to pop straight up over there. 8 goes into 27 three times. That's 24. Remainder, 3. Bring down a 0. Goes in three times is 24. Remainder, 6. Bring down another 0. That goes in seven times. That's 56. The remainder, 4. Bring down another 0. That's 40. Goes in exactly five times. So we get 3.375. Check real quick, that was a good date, so y equals 3.375x plus, got another division to do. Hey, but I hear Javier already calling out, hey, Mr. Boots, I see that's a bad date. Let's make that negative. Let's put that down before we forget. We're three, top dog goes in the house, divided by the 0.8. All right, uh, move the decimal outside the house, meaning to move the decimal inside the house. Pop it straight up. Uh, 8 goes into 30. Three times. That's 24. That's a remainder 6. 0 goes into 60. 7 times. That's 56. Remainder 4. Bring down a 0. Goes in exactly 5 times. Plus negative 3.75. That's where we're at. Any questions about our work for today?